Good morning, guys. Um, I'm just going to talk to you today about some things that got in prayer, been, been having in prayer, but been on my heart too. But all this essential, non essential, where did it all come from, guys? The non essential came from the from the enemy of our soul, the devil himself. Been going on in the church for a while, guys. For years, actually. Not just us, but in the religious world. Jesus' time, even. You know, he wasn't essential. His life wasn't essential. But yet it was. There's too much of this garbage out there, guys. We're all essential to the kingdom. What are you doing with what God's given you? It is time to repent and weep between the porch and the altar. It's time to turn from our wicked ways. Get back to him. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost and his word. Nothing else is going to change it. Let's go kind of stick with the essential a little bit, but that's that's very true. Um, but it fits in. There's a reason. <clears throat> the essential piece is kind of like a, you know, two ships, but well, it's for some reason the Lord takes me to this natural stuff, but two ships. But it's time to be on the battleship a warship, not worship. Yes, worship, we need to do that too. Worship the living God, worship him in spirit and in truth, of course. <clears throat> but let's take a battleship, okay? You, you got a gunner or whatever, if you remove him to put him in the mechanic spot or vice versa, or, or if you just take him off, that position becomes an unmanned position or on woman position, way for the enemy to get in, to destroy that ship. So we've, you know, everything's essential, guys. The mechanic has to be there because the ship has to keep going. If it's not, it's a lame duck in the water, and then what? You know, it becomes an easy target, especially if it's in a war zone. Somebody has to come and rescue it, the people on it. It just, you know, ship needs to be in motion <clears throat> okay so then let's go to this other one that he showed me <clears throat> it's an aircraft carrier that movie Top Gun everybody wants to be Tom Cruise the fighter jockey fly in blow up everybody now it's smart bombs and all that stuff Back then it wasn't but <clears throat> they want to be the in the David and Goliath story, they want to cut David's head off with his own sword and run through the town with a bloody head. <clears throat> nobody wants to be the servant that nobody sees. God sees, because we're essential to God. <clears throat> so he took me stepped back, took a different view of the ship, big ship. Everybody wants to be the admiral, the captain, the top gun guy, the fighter pilot. I want to be the hero. Save the day. The sensationalism of all of it. It's all necessary, guys. I'm not saying that those spots aren't necessary either. But God wants the glory. He took me back. And I saw the ship from a little bit different perspective. And he took me to the bottom of the ship. Showed me the propeller. And propellers are huge, guys. You know that. I mean, I grew up in on the Mississippi River. And those barge propellers are pretty big. Well, those aircraft air propellers are even bigger. They're huge. And then there's a shaft that goes up through the ship. Showed me the shaft. Took me down to the bottom. And I toured one 
when we were in San Diego visiting, visiting somebody. They're really not designed for creature comfort, guys. They're designed for war. They're not kind of cramped, small, just, I mean, utilizing every space. So, you think at the bottom of the ship down there where the, the shaft is coming in that it's, you know, warm and fuzzy and air conditioned and painted walls? Probably not. Probably painted, all right, it's painted just to keep it from rusting, but <clears throat> probably not even very good air conditioning, if that even, you know? I mean, it's pretty, probably pretty brutal. <clears throat> But the shaft comes through and it comes through a seal. And that seal has to be maintained. Or the seawater can get in, maybe sink the ship. Or stop the ship. If that shaft stops, it burns up. It's revolving so many top revolutions per minute. Spinning super fast. That's a major asset in a war zone, guys. That aircraft carrier can't stop. It has to be on the move. They have to move into position a lot for the planes to land. There's just a lot of, I mean, it has to move. It has to be on the move. That's where the body of Christ needs to be. We need to be on the move. But, so there's some grease monkeys down there, a handful of them, but they have to maintain it 24 seven. I don't know what they, you know, the techni technology of it is, it's probably not grease now, maybe, but you get the point. That seal has to be maintained, kind of like the Holy Ghost. That seal has to be maintained to keep the world out, the seawater out, to keep the ship moving. Nobody sees them. They're probably dirty, young kids. Maybe one guy in charge or one gal in charge. Now, you know, that's okay. <clears throat> Just as essential, guys. Because if that ship stops, it doesn't matter how powerful the planes are and what they can do. Thousands of people's lives could be at stake. The whole, you know, I mean, that's a capital ship. But it's maintained, it's maintained and that shaft and seal is maintained by just a handful of people that nobody sees. Non-essential, no essential. So what's your position with the, with the Lord? What's he giving you? What is he showing you? Let's stick with that and then I'm gonna end too because I wanna stay on this theme. What did Jesus do? He used what he had with the, with the loaves and the fish. Everybody else was like, man, how are we gonna feed these people? All the, you know, the stuff that's going on and what can't go to the store. And Jesus was concerned about sending them home without anything to eat that they didn't faint. He was, you know, concerned about the natural, even though he was giving, even though he was giving them the spiritual. We got what he told his disciples, kind of, you know. I mean, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but what do we have? A boy with some fish and loaves. But what is the first thing he did? Thank God it broke the bread. And then he watched it multiply. He used what he had. So that's what he's doing now, guys, with us as his body. You and me, we're essential to winning this warfare and it's not in the carnal. The world has it all twisted up. Everything's all these fact checkers and all this stuff. And man, Facebook is lie, a bunch of lies, guys. I hate doing it, honestly, because it's demonic. We're stepping into the demonic realm on YouTube and Facebook and all this other stuff but we have to take it back. I don't know how long I'll be on here. It may ban me, you know, Facebook has already restricted me more than once, all the time. 
you ever see Jesus across any of it, other than on the pre other than the preaching people? Did you ever see an ad for that? No. Got to pull the fact check on me, and everything was man. Most of it was a promotion of anti-Trump campaign. I'm not politicizing it. I'm just saying they hate that guy so much. That's become an idol too, though, guys. Honestly, the whole political system, all this essential, non-essential. <laughs> Some of the main politicians are talking about they, they shut the whole country down. Well, to stop the coronavirus, it's a it's a virus, guys. And there's plenty of them out there. Other ones too. Why this one? Because it's a power trip. It's a way to. To, to, to gain what they want to gain. <clears throat> Back to the essential, non-essential. Well, none of them are going to consider their lives non-essential. The enemy wants us to think that, to go to go that route. <clears throat> but God is, is like, man, no. I don't care if you're the drunk homeless guy or woman that just woke up in your vomit or if you're the three that three-piece suit on and one of these a larger church some of them aren't even churches honestly guys let's just face it that's what happened with this coronavirus we were all like if we were that powerful the lights weren't even on guys we went to the switch there was no power there i'm sorry we it's, it is time to repent and turn I'm not saying we, you know, we, 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 we failed as a church, as a body, because we've been like that Ichabod Crane guy, headless, because that's God's plan, was Jesus. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. We've got to get back to the Word. We've got to get back to the Bible. We've got to get back to what's essential. Essential to God. We're essential, guys. We're not non-essential. I'm going to end with this. One of the... Because all sin is sin. So I don't know that necessarily big is the right word, but... The abortion issue. Guys, we've got sin on our hands. In a large way. More people... More, People have lost their lives just because they're little people, just because they're not even, they're babies. More lives have been lost. In what, 40, 50 million? I'm not comparing these, but yet at the same time, I'm just throwing this out there, but all the people that Hitler killed in the gas chambers were six, seven million people. We've let more die. The church has dropped the ball, guys. Because the enemy told us that their lives are non-essential. Lies. We're all essential to God. John 3.16. That's why I put that out there. Love you guys, but we're all we're all needed. It's it's the ta the talent one is a good one too. Some buried it. What are you doing with what God's given you? Some people, Kent Peters, he's one really, really, you mind, he's relentless, and he should be on the abortion issue. Spokane, Washington, go see him, go visit him, go help him. He's being sued right now for his own church outside of an abortion clinic. That's the mantle that God's given him. That's the essential part of, he's the essential part of the body for that. There's another guy here in Dallas, Aaron Buttrick, go spend the day with him. He's feeding the homeless man. He's relentless. It's 12, 14, 16 hour days. Long, hot days. Bringing him meals. Setting up tents with air conditioners so that they can be cool. So they can give him the gospel without them fainting. He's doing everything he can think of to do. You may be a stay-at-home mom. You may be raising kids. 
thank God for that too, because I saw a post about the defunding of the police. That's another thing. We made them non-essential. The home was non-essential. <clears throat> but it was like you had 18 years to raise your kids and you didn't teach them to not loot and steal and kill and destroy. But yeah, you think the police are bad? And I'm not saying that there isn't, that, you know, that wasn't a horrible situation and some of them, you know, yes, of course. Does need to be, we need to stop it. We need to, you know, when we find that out, that needs to be addressed. But making them non-essential, Because if some of some of that are evil, get rid of them, of course. Treat them like criminals, of course. But the rest of it, no. But that's what the enemy is doing: steal, kill, and destroy. To make us all feel like we don't have a purpose and that are aren't essential. And Jesus is saying, "No, you're all essential." Even on the cross, the people that were killing him told him we were just, just so angry. Pilate was like, man, it makes no sense. They're like, kill him, kill him, destroy him. Kind of like what the world's doing now. Shut you down, wear a mask. Just don't care if you don't have a job. Don't care if you can't feed your family. What are you going to do? Go hide in your house and die? and my front door going to stop a virus? No, I don't think so. Non-essential, but we're all essential to the kingdom. According to the word of God, Jesus on the cross, back to that. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And would any of us do that? No, we'd be come out swinging. That's why we need to repent, humble ourselves, turn from our wicked ways, get back to him. So I'm going to end with this at five in the morning, a prayer. And we'll do it as a nation and we'll, and we'll win this battle. We're not going to win it by voting, We're, by voting people out. We're going to win it by praying people out and people in, the right people in. Because it's, it's a spiritual battle, guys. It's not going to be one in the natural. So let's do this. Because we're essential. Let's reconnect to the body. Let's reconnect the body to the head. Which is Jesus Christ. Love you guys. And the essential piece of the gathering is not the gathering in the building, but we are supposed to gather because it gives you that personal accountability. This virtual reality stuff ain't going to work, guys. Too easy to turn it off and just live in your own sin and do your own thing and just say you went to church or whatever. It's not about the church even, guys. It's about gathering together as his body. But he, the reason why it happened the way that it happened is because so many houses were built upon sand and he wants to rebuild them upon the rock. Oh, the church is coming forth, guys. His body's coming forth. And we do need to gather together, strengthen each other. But we need to do it the way he wants it done. That's why we have to repent, turn from our wicked ways, turn, being key, humbling ourselves, being key. Just saying, you know what, God, we screwed up. Face it, guys. Look around. Everywhere you go is a bunch of mindless robots wearing masks. It's because somebody told them to. Those things are cheesy, guys. Where are the fact checkers on that? They're not. They're busy politicizing it, tearing things down. No science behind that. Come on, guys. Let's get real. Love you guys, but we're essential to the kingdom. So let's act like it and be like it and be that light to the world. 
and you're not going to get it and get your direction from CNN and from the political system and from the from the government. Guys, it's setting that you, we're going to trust the same people that just lock, that locked us up, told us they just shut the country down, lock everybody up, nobody can have a job or whatever, you know. Nonsense. That's how we ended up with all the gay issues and the gay marriages and the abortion and everything. We just let it go as, as a body of Christ. We just, oh, well, we'll just tolerate it. Oh, it'll change. Oh, it won't change till we change it. Till we change. Kind of a little sombering, I get it. We've got to take this back that the enemy stolen from the church. Get a little bit of Holy Ghost backbone here, guys. Let's do this. Love you guys. Um, but we're all essential to the kingdom. According to the word of God, written before the foundation of, of us, we weren't even around when it was written. God that created heaven and earth said we were so essential that he gave his son the best he had. That was how much he valued us. That's how essential we are. But the world is like, I don't know, you know, kill a baby because it's a blob. It's not even a scientific what are you, man, what kind of nonsense? And then even up to eight months, and man, it's pretty gruesome, guys, what they do to it. What they, you know, and then they sell the parts and all this other stuff, guys. And then the church is just kind of like, you know, I heard there was one pastor that was like, supposed pastor, anyhow, honestly, I don't think he is. Just telling it like it is. That it goes along with the Christian values. I'm like, take your sign down, dude. Repent. There's going to be no more hiding behind the lies of this world. You know, just to get people's money. God's done with that. Is it not pretty apparent? Look around. This is the real deal, guys. So, anyhow, I love you. But we're essential. All of us. I said, whether if you're a stay-at-home mom, you got to raise those kids right. Because one day they're going to be 18 and out on their own. and <clears throat> Either burning down the house or being the house, the house of God. The light of the world. you got to be one or the other. So that's a very essential position, guys. We all have to do what we're supposed to do, what God called us to do, and the obedience is very important too, and you're not going to get all the direction, obedience, and all the things that God wants you to do with your smartphone, and your tablet, and your computer. You're going to get it out with some theology and your prayer life, seeking God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Trusting in him, Ephesians. Trust in the Lord with all your Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And he'll direct your path. You want direction, you want guidance, you want wisdom from above. Turn everything off. You can get up with me at five in the morning. It's not just me. Guys, I'm not just saying that because I this is not just, oh yeah, this, this is not sensationalism, guys. It's the real deal. We need to do this as a nation. We want this nation back. It's not going to be come November 3rd and who we vote in and who we don't vote in. Prayer. Seeking God. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. Who's your source? Love you guys. Talk to you soon.
We're all essential to the kingdom of God. Just look at Jesus. That's how essential we really are. Love you guys.